Hey guys, my name is Juan. I'm just one reader and I wanted to make this video to celebrate the arrival of 2017. I don't know when I will upload this video, so who knows, maybe you're watching this in 2016 or it already is 2017. But either way, I wanted to post this video making some plans uh, book-wise and reading-wise for the upcoming year. Now, I didn't want to make a proper TBR for 2017 because I realized that I actually made a TBR for 2016 and God knows that didn't work. Uh, making TBRs is something that I very much enjoy but rarely follow through. I usually feel like TBRs are just, for me, a very obsessive almost compulsive way of having fun. It, it really is something that I deeply enjoy planning ahead and almost calendarizing my reading. But it's never realistic, I never really do it, and I always end up changing my TBR as I go or just feeling very frustrated. So obviously, if I cannot do a TBR for a month, I'm not going to do a TBR for an entire year of reading. So instead of a TBR, this is just some uh, video on some reading plans. I'm going to mention a shit ton of books that I have here in front of me uh, in the walls that you cannot see. But uh, basically what I did was I reorganized my entire uh, library. So uh, I have bookshelves all around my house and uh, I selected some books that I want to read in 2017 or that I would hope to get around to reading in 2017 and I arranged them here uh, in my bedroom so that <laughs> like a like a strategy because my belief is that if I look at these books constantly I am more likely going to pick them up. So uh, I'm just going to show you some of the covers, mention some uh, titles, and really the objective of this video is to hear from you guys. Uh, I would love to hear what you have to say if you tell me uh, whether it is an opinion or something interesting or something that you heard about either of these books, that would be really helpful in order for me to just prioritize uh, which books I want to read uh, before and which, which books I want to read first. Um, so, without any further ado, let's get started. As I Lay Dying, William Faulkner, The Blue Girl, Lori Foos, Bastard Out of Carolina, Dorothy Allison, Shelter, The Glister, The Story of My Teeth, Valeria Luiselli, Under the Skin, Michelle Faber, Vile Bodies, Evelyn Wall, Our Hearts Will Burn Us Down, and Valenti, Geek Love, Catherine Dunn, White Oleander, Janet Fitch, My Name is Leon, Kid Duval, Everything I Never Told You, Celesting, The Accidental, Alice Smith, The Beautiful Bureaucrat, Helen Phillips, Giovanni's Room, James Baldwin, Fates and Furies, Lauren Groff, A Tale for the Time Being, Ruth Ozeki, A Trig Rose in Brooklyn, Betty Smith, Now's the Hour by Tom Spambauer, Tender Morsels, Margot Lanigan, Deathless, Catherine M. Valenti, The Interestings, Meg Wolitzer, and I actually wanted to mention here, uh, about the interestings that I really think this is going to be a book that I will definitely be reading in 2017. I have seen great reviews from what I've heard and read. This feels like the type of book that I will love. Um, you know, give me a book about douchebag, prestigious, pretentious kids and uh, art, and I'm there. Uh, I was... From what I heard, I was reminded of uh, Donna Tartt's The Secret History, but, uh, you know, maybe not as tragic. And I saw a review that uh, Stephanie posted. Stephanie from That's What She Read. And I just kept thinking to myself, Juan, why haven't you read it? The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz. Infinite Home by Kathleen Alcott, and this is the lovely signed edition that I got in New York City at the Strand. 
The Fermata by Nicholson Baker, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, Of Things Gone Astray by Janina Mathewson, and this book has probably the most stunning cover ever. How to Be Both by Alice Smith, The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton, this won the Man Booker Prize, and it's a historical fiction piece uh, that comes in at around 900 pages, so you know, it's one of those super intimidating books that I've always wanted to read. Radiance, Catherine M. Valenti. Now, I do have two series that I have planned for 2017, and I didn't really read any series whatsoever in 2016, so I would love for 2017 to have more series and more fantasy, and I chose two fantasy series that I think are really good. They are really popular, heavily recommended to me based on my reading taste. So the first one of those series is the Live Ship Traders trilogy by Robin Hobb, which includes ship... Well, this is this is my uh, Spanish uh, translation. Uh, this is what I could get. So uh, the first one is Ship of Magic, followed by The Mad Ship, and finally Ship of Destiny. The other series that I have planned is the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson, and this is the lovely UK box set. The Grace Keepers, Kirsty Logan. Cat's Eye, Margaret Atwood. The Bluest Eye, Toni Morrison. The New York Trilogy by Paul Auster. The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. This is a lovely edition, and I have seen that this book has very polarizing reviews. The positive reviews are sensationally good and the negative reviews are abysmally negative. Uh, so this is a very polarizing book, which is not a good or a bad thing, really. It's just the way it is. And uh, that makes me kind of hesitant about reading it. But then again, my favorite book of 2015 was A Little Life by Hania Yanigahara, and that is also an extremely polarizing book, so I guess I should give it the benefit of the doubt. Disgrace by J. Aim Coetzee, and I think this also won the Man Booker Prize in 1999. I was eight years old. A Head Full of Ghosts, Paul Tremblay. Delicious Foods, James Hanahan. Smoke, Dan Valletta. The Tiger's Wife, Teo Brett. We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Schreiber, and this is my ugly Spanish translation with the movie tie-in cover. The Master and Margarita by a seemingly Russian author whose name I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. Weird Things Customers Say at Bookstores by Jen Campbell, and I also have the second part. Miss Bunkle's Book by D.E. Stevenson. The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi, which is, by the way, another one of my favorite covers. No one is here except all of us, Ramona Ossible. I actually read two, the other two things that Ramona Ossible has published this year. Uh, I read the collection of short stories, A Guide to Being Born, which was part of my top 10 of the year. And then again, I also read the novel uh, Sons and Daughters of Ease and Plenty, which I did not really enjoy. So here's hoping. The Good Luck of Right Now, Matthew Quick. The Days of Abandonment, Elena Ferrante. Sorry, Elena Ferrante. Poor Things, Alistair Gray. The Humans, Matt Haig. The Separation, Christopher Priest. The Catcher in the Rye, J.D. Salinger. The Knife Drawer, Patricia Tarrant. The Insights, Jeremy Bushnell. The Panopticon, Jenny Fagan. Bel Canto, Ann Patchett. The Last Delusion, Porchista Kapoor. The Rehearsal by Eleanor Catton. And finally, Did You Ever Have a Family by Bill Clegg. Now, I will also be continuing on with my series on rereading Harry Potter as an adult. So, during 2017, you can expect to see me review Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, The Order of the Phoenix, The Half-Blood Prince, and The Deathly Hallows in my channel.
Guys, I realized this video was extremely long and it had a lot of content. I showed you pretty much all the books that I have on my bedroom, uh, at least the ones that I really want to read in 2017. So uh, I'm sorry if it was overwhelming. It was a lot of fun for me. I felt like I was hosting at the Oscars or something, just like saying that the title of the book and the author. <laughs> uh, so I would really appreciate your comments, your feedback, and any Anything interesting that you could say that could persuade me to read or not read a book. It's always very helpful. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.